All right, we're going to talk about building a successful program. Uh, Eric Casper, Rich Pinerson High School. Uh, this will be my eighth year at Pine Richland as the head football coach. Um, this is something I'm very passionate about, something that, uh, you know, we take a lot of pride in at, at Pine Richland. Uh, you know, when, when I first became a, a head football coach, a lot of it was X's and O's and, you know, what offense we're going to run, what defense we're going to run, um, all that good stuff that, that football coaches care about. But when it comes to building a successful program, I think it goes much deeper than that. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So when we took over, uh, a couple of things here. I think, number one, you have to have a vision. You have to have a goal. All right? You have to have a philosophy and you have to have a plan. All right, Pretty pretty clear, pretty simple. But whatever it is, you, you got to stick to it and you got to go through the long haul. There's going to be ups. There's going to be downs. There's going to be you know lots of big waves throughout the deal. And you, you got to make sure you keep your, keep your eye on the prize at the end, whatever that is for you, and work towards it every single day, every single rep, every single hour. I, I love this quote. This is actually a couple of years ago. We won a state championship and the quote above it is successful seasons are 75% culture and 25% scheme. And I think when I first started, I, I would have thought that was the opposite. Um, but now being in, in this for a while, 20 plus years coaching high school football, um, culture is, is paramount uh, without a doubt. And the culture, uh, that's the culture of your team. That's the culture of you as the, football, as the head football coach. If you, the culture of your assistants, the culture of each and every player, you know, when they're playing for you. When, when they're walking the halls in the classroom, when they're in the community, how do they carry themselves? They are a direct reflection of you as the head football coach. And, and the, the better you, you can create that culture, um, the better off it will be. Our vision and goal. So when we started uh, years ago, um, we, we had a very specific vision. All right. We, we wanted to see what the final product was. Uh, things we did were, were process oriented. All right. We really weren't worried about the outcome per se. Uh, sure, we had goals. Uh, but we were, never really talked about the goals. It was just winning every day, doing the little things correct, um, you know, going 1-0. and o, You know, it was a tagline for us a couple of years ago, win the day. Um, obviously, we had long-term goals. We wanted to be state champ. We wanted to be the best high school football team in the state of Pennsylvania. That was our, that was our goal. But, again, we re never really talked about that. We just talked about coming in, doing the best we could, working our butts off each and every day. All right, we want to build men of, men of character. All right, we don't just want to have kids come in and, and – and, and play football for us. You know, we want to get to know them on, on a different level, build relationships with them, show that, the, that we care about them. Um, the, the more they know you care, the more that they know, you know, that, that they'll play for you. Uh, they'll lay it on the line for you. Um, and then if you, I think at the end of the day, we got to determine how we're going to define the success. It, it, is success winning eight games a year? Is it winning 10 games a year? What if you don't win 10 games a year? Is it a successful season? So you, you got to kind of figure out how you define success um and basically how we do that is is this quote right here and this is hanging in our facility i did everything in my power to make sure you were successful today not me but you and if you, you think about that that's very powerful and that's hard for young men today to to really grasp a hold of you know that they actually cared more about the person sitting next to them in the locker room their success more than their own and i think the more you can get people to believe in that and to buy into that um, the more successful you will be. It doesn't matter who scores the touchdowns or, or who gets the ball given to them or who, who, who gets all the carries or whatever it is. It doesn't matter. You know, certain guys have a night, the other guys have a night. I did everything in my power to make sure this guy here next to me was successful and not myself. All right. So philosophy. We want to develop a culture of caring, family first. All right. And I know that's a kind of a, uh, a catchphrase, but we, we really do believe in that from the top down. That starts with me. That starts with me and my staff and treating my staff the right way, understanding the family is important. We're going to work hard. We're going to come in and do what we need to do, but we're not going to grind them too hard. Uh, there's a lot of things we can do at home, especially in today's age, 2020 uh, technology. Uh, we, we can meet virtually. We can do everything online. There's no need to come in for Saturday, you know, late Saturday meetings and, and Sunday meetings. We haven't met on a Sunday you know, in, in, in the eight years I've been there, uh, rules and discipline, you know, you got to have some rules, you got to have some discipline, but you got to be careful about that. Um, I'm a believer in not, not having too many rules, you know, two or three rules is all you need to make sure they cover the whole gamut. Um, the more rules you have, the more you gotta, you know, worry about keeping track of and you end up painting yourself into a corner. Um, keep the rules very strict. Uh, but, but I don't think you need many of them. Core values. Uh, when we took it over, like I said, we came up with 12 core values, and we use those core values multiple times a year. 
um, starting our off-season program, 12 weeks, we use the 12 core values. Each week, um, we talk about one of those values. This is a way we build our leadership program into our program. Same thing during the season. Now, there's oftentimes we play more than 12 games in a season, but starting with the first week, through those first 12 games, each week has a different core value, toughness, um, integrity, sacrifice, whatever your values are to you, um, that's, that's what we use. We came up with these as a staff. We sat down and said, what are the most important values to this program? What, this, what is this program going to be known for? What are we going to be about? So then each week, say week one, it's, it's toughness. Every talk that I talk um, to the team about, pregame talk, after practice talks, social media posts, emails, texts to the parents is all about toughness, toughness, toughness. So that whole week, those kids know what toughness is. We have the kids come up and talk about it um, uh, throughout the week as well. So it's very clearly stated what that means to us. And I think um, intangibles of a successful, of a successful program, um, you know, you got to have too. So culture of caring, family, they don't care what you know until they know how much you care. This, this quote um, really runs deep with me. Um, I've been around coaches before that really, you know, all they cared about was getting something from the player. You know, how fast can you run? Oh, you run fast? Okay, we'll give you the ball, go score a touchdown. Okay, so you scored, all right, go sit on the bench. Um, really not developing a relationship with that. And the kids can see right through that. They got to know that you care about them. They got to know that that you're there for them. They got to know that you care about them more than just what you can do on the football field for them. All right, and I think the more that they know that you care, uh, the longer – um, or the better relationship you will have. So rules and discipline I touched on. Um, you can see on the top right there, football, academics, character, they all kind of go together. We're all kind of um, together there as one. You can't be um, really good in one and not so good in the others. We try to be equal in all three phases there. Uh, be the best student you can be. Be the best football player you can be. Be the best person in the community you can be, right? Again, direct reflection of you as, as a coach. Uh, I think you got to be tough. Uh, but flexible, right? There's different situations that go on. And I think the number one thing is you got to be fair and consistent uh, with your treatment of all your players. A uh, good example, uh, two years ago, I had a star quarterback. He went on to play at Notre Dame. Uh, I think it was week four. We have a, a pregame meeting before we go to our pregame meal. Started at four o'clock. Four o'clock, door shut. Uh, he wasn't there. 4 uh, 402 came by. He knocked some door. We let him in. We continue the meeting, uh, but sure enough, that game, we, we made him set out in uh, the whole first quarter, star quarterback. But if I would have let that slide, that would have – my whole uh, credibility would have went downhill. I had to be fair. It doesn't matter if you're starting quarterback or the kid that is on the scout team and never sees a sniff of uh, football on a Friday night. you got to be consistent. Core values. So touched on these. We use 12 of them, toughness, integrity, sacrifice, et cetera. Uh, we have a weekly theme both in-season and off-season. Uh, with these, all my talks, speeches encompass this weekly theme. All right. And again, I'm a big believer in having a team theme or mantra. Our program mantra is all in. You know, you got to be all into the program. You're either all in or you're not. All right. And then every year we develop a yearly mantra. Okay. Whatever that is, want to know, win the day. Um, this year is finish. Right. We came a, a game short last year, so it's finished the deal. And that, that's everything we do this year will be finish. Hashtag finish. Social media is huge nowadays. The kids are on it all day long. So we want to make sure we do a good job of voicing what our, our, our team mantra is. And then I touched on intangibles of, of, of a successful program. What do successful programs look like? Right. It, it's funny how if you put two teams out there and just stood them out there, you could probably tell just on how they carry themselves which team is more successful, all right? I think a team, a successful program has swagger. I think they have trust in their coach and their players and each other. I think their players are coachable, right? You can, you might have some high-end kids, but they are coachable. They, they take coaching, all right? You can get on them. You can coach them hard, and they don't clam up, okay? Uh, I think successful programs have respect for their opponents, right? Some, you know, so some teams you play just aren't up to your level, and some are. Uh, but it's up to you as a staff to make sure those teams that you're playing that might not be as talented as you or might not be as, as good as you or on your level that you, you make sure your team respects them. All right? You should never lose a game that you shouldn't win. And then finally, appreciation. I think this is probably the best part. And, you know, the journey is the best part. And I often find myself, you know, we start the offseason program. In February, I look back in May, I'm like, where did the time go? It's just, it just you know, it's a journey. You're, you're so worried about that next day. 
that that you kind of forget about it. It kind of all just blends together. You know, it's the same thing with a long season. You know, we went 16 and 0 a few years ago, and and at the end you blink an eye, and it felt like it was two days long. Meanwhile, it was four months long. Uh, but appreciate that journey again every day. Same thing. Come on in, work your butt off, go one and zero. No regrets. You can't look back. You can't worry about what other people are saying. You can't worry about the voices. You know, you got to have your plan with you and your staff, and you got to focus on that solely 100%. All right, you got to have a plan. So, what's a plan? I have a bunch of things here, and I'll go over each one of them, but you have to have a plan for your staff, team pride, team building, off season, in season communication, media, social media. You have to have a plan for your relationships in the school. All right, budget, fundraising, booster, and community support competition, incentives, awards, motivation, and then obviously at the end, you have to have some X's and O's in there as well. All right, first thing, staff. I was, I was uh, told by a smart guy a long time ago, you need to surround yourself with great people. They must be all in to your program. They must be all into your vision and your philosophy. All right, give them a role and let them coach. I'm huge with this. All right, I, I never like to be a part of a staff where the head coach wouldn't let you coach, right? I'm going to give you a role and you're going to be the head coach Whatever that, whatever that is. If you're the running back coach, you're the head coach of the running back. If you're the special teams coordinator, you're the head coach of the special team. If you're the scout team coordinator, you're the head coach of the scout team. If you're the get back coach, you're the head coach of that. And you're going to do the best you can to be the best back get back coach in the country. So give them a role and let them coach. All right, walk the walk. You are the face of the program. All right, you, you can't be doing things and, and and getting away with things and taking shortcuts and then. Expect your players and hold them to a higher standard. You are you are the face. You got to walk the walk. Uh, you got to be adaptive. I believe you know. Again, there's different situations as a head football coach. Um, you know, as defense coordinators, offense coordinator, things come up. You know, you wish you could just go in there every day and just coach football, right? But that's not not the case. You're dealing with 14, 15, 16, 17 year old kids. Um, you know, girlfriends and 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 you know pets getting sick and losing family members and doing bad in school, whatever it is, um, things come up. There's so many distractions. So you got to be adaptive as a coach and be ready to handle those. Praise loudly, criticize softly. So big believer in this. Um, if you're going to criticize a kid, do it, do it quietly. Pull them aside one-on-one. -on -one. You know, but if you're going to praise them, hey, great catch or great run or awesome job on that block. Well, do it loud. Let everybody hear you. You know, everybody likes to be complimented. Everybody likes to get told how well they're doing. So we really talk about that. And then five to one, we have a five to one rule. So uh, we, we, we make sure that we do a good job as coaches uh, for every, you know, I don't say negative, for every time that you get on a kid, every time you coach a kid hard, uh, one time, make sure you love them up at least five times, you know, whatever that is. Um, it, it doesn't even have to be football related. It could be off the field um, things as well. Um, last couple things, make everybody in the program feel special value and needed. Um, you know, you're not just, you know, your offense coordinator, your defense coordinator. They, those guys can't be the most important people. The, the, the trainer, your equipment manager, the secretary in school, they all have to feel like they are valued and needed to your program. And then finally, professional development staff trips is something that we do a lot of. Again, making your staff feel important. Um, I think it's great for staff bonding. My staff has been together now completely for five straight years, which I think is definitely goes a long way to, to the success we've had. Um, there's continuity. We know it's expected. They know it's expected. Uh, we've worked with each other before um, for a number of years, but, you know, we're not complacent. We're still going out trying to learn, visiting staffs, um, showing them that you, you care about them um, as well. All right, now we're on to Team Pride. Um, we do a bunch of things here, and we are the Rams, so we call them all the Rams. First thing is Ram Points. Um, you know, this is a good way to track attendance, uh, to, you know, incentivize kids to come around to workouts, to build school spirit. You know, we, we, we encourage our kids, Hey, go to the boys basketball game tonight. It's going to be Ram football night at the boys. So we have 50 kids rolling at the boys hoops game. We go to, you know, the school play. How many times do you see a, a big group of football players at a school play? But again, they come to watch us. So we're going to show school spirit and go back and support them. And we give our kids Ram points for this. You know, based on how they do in grades, we give ramp points for that. If you give above a 3-0, above a 3-5, high honors, et cetera, we'll give ramp points for that. Ram 360 program, this is where we bring in speakers. So this could be alumni. This could be very influential people in our community to come speak to our uh, players about things other than football. You know, what are you going to do when you when you get out of high school? What are you going to do when you get out of college? Um, just 
getting them exposed to other successful people um, in the area and the program. Grand service, uh, we do a volunteer uh, activity every year. We, we try to uh, mandate our kids get eight hours of volunteer hours. Um, you know, as a team, we try to do a big one together. Uh, and that's a bit, been a great thing that we have done recently. Uh, Ram video, this is a great way to get more of your students in the school involved. Um, our video crew is, uh, is, is from our high school and we call them the Ram video crew. We, we buy them cool uh, t-shirts they wear. They're the ones that build the highlight tapes for us and then do the cool stuff. They, they can do the pregame hype videos. You know, there's always a kid on the sideline that's got the, the, the close-up sideline view that they can mesh together, put the cool music to it, and then on a Friday, put the little one- to two-minute little hype video out for our team, and our kids absolutely love that. Ram lockers. So every kid's got a number, obviously, and when they graduate the program, so Bob Smith is number 42. Well, when Bob Smith graduates, we get a plaque made, put that right in the back of the locker uh, with Bob Smith. So, you know, we have up to eight, eight, eight names so far since I've been there in the back of the locker. Um, at, at each specific number. So when a kid comes in, he realizes that, um, you know, the people that came before him that played there, uh, whether they're famous or not, or maybe they played college football or not, it doesn't really matter, but just understanding and helps, helps build tradition amongst the program. We do a Ram walk. Now this is something that a lot of colleges do, and that's kind of where I stole it. But um, we come in but on, a, on a game night, we'll, we'll do a pregame meeting in our facility. Once we're done with that, and then we walk over to the high school where we have our pregame meal. And then on the way back from the high school, we have our parents and cheerleaders and, and band members. And sometimes we get a lot, sometimes not so much. But the parents are usually, usually always there. But they make a tunnel just like you would see, in, you know, on college game day. And we go walk. It's, it's about a, you know, 300-yard uh, walk. And we walk through the parents, and they're all cheering. And kids get excited. They get to hug their mom. And, and they say good luck and, and ready to go. So they, the kids like that. Ram Olympics, this is something we do in spring at uh, the culmination of our spring ball. Again, play different games. We, we get into teams. We actually use our RAM points, um, and based on how they are added up, the top 12 people, um, again, are given a core value. If you look back to those, this is another way to work in your core values. Uh, and we do an old school, like elementary school, pick them. You know, we, the top 12 guys here, and they get to pick, and you're picked first, you're picked second. They're picking the guys that have done well um, in the offseason. If you're picked last, well, I think that says something about you. That means you haven't been around much. You haven't been working too hard, and nobody likes getting picked last. So, that's our Ram Olympics. We'll do dance contests. We do. We get the jugs machine on. We shoot it up high to the offensive lineman. They got to catch it. And, you know, spin around with the broomstick and that kind of stuff. Just make it fun. But again, we're competing in everything we do there. And then finally, leadership council. We we developed developed the leadership council a few years ago. I try to get two members from each class. So we have roughly six people on the leadership council. Um, how do they get on there? We have them write an essay. What does it mean to be a Pine Ridgeland Ram football player? Um, it's anonymous. Us as a staff read them, rank them, and then we pick two from each class. Um, they're a little different than captains. Captains, we allow to do, make some certain decisions, but the leadership council is just kind of, um, you know, it's kind of my my eye in the locker room. You know, when you're not in the locker room, what, what's really going on in there? What's the what's the vibe in the locker room? Do they think we're practicing too long or practicing too short? Should we maybe maybe let them pick our music that we play during practice? There's different things like that that they kind of come back to me. Um, give opinions about how the program is running at that particular time. All right, team building. We do a lot with this. Again, um, you know, X's and O's in my mind have kind of gone down and more of the, the culture of team building has gone up. Um, we feed our kids three times a week. Um, we spend um, thousands of dollars um, on food for our team. We, we f uh, feed them on Saturday mornings when we watch film. We feed them a pregame meal before our games on Friday night and then um, we do a film review during the week in the evenings where we, we bring in pizza as well. So again, just, you know, I think there's something about eating together and being together and hanging out. And, but at the same time, we're learning football as well. Uh, we do home run derby contests when it's in the winter, we'll go into gym and do three point shootouts. We'll go to team movies together. We'll do position outings. Each of my coaches get a, um, hundred dollar, two hundred dollars stipend that they get to take their 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 group out. So if offensive linemen always go to eat. They'll go eat wings. You know, our receivers might go play putt putt. Our other guys might go um, zip lining. You know, like a ropes course, stuff like that. Again, building that bond together as a group, as quarterbacks, as running backs, as defensive linemen. Now we have a lot of kids that play both ways, so we make a decision there. Usually, just make them pick one of the sides and they go and do that. And then we have even uh, this past year did a, a Zoom Madden tournament, which was awesome. We had an online. I think we had sixty two. Uh, players in the program, coaches included, 
then we did an online Madden tournament. We did one with PS, PS4 and one with uh, Xbox, and that was an awesome little way to kind of stay together and keep that bond uh, together, but again, still competing. Um, these two boards here, so in the offseason now, we, we, we go three to three times a week. You see the two boards on the right. This is our countdown clock, and then this Train Heroic, this is the app we use uh, to do all of our offseason training. So all of our offseason um, workouts, we prescribe everything via this Train Heroic app. So even if we're together in the weight room um, or if we're not, um, everything's shot through the app. Kids uh, have a personalized account, and that stays with them through the program. So if you come in as a ninth grader, then you can actually go back four years later when you're a senior and look and see how much you've improved. Um, it shows as videos, instructions. Uh, we can message them through it. It's an awesome, awesome app, um, something that it's vital to our success in the weight room. Um, like I said, we get three days a week, about an hour, an hour and a half a day. Um, we have a winter, a spring, and a summer phase. Um, and then spring ball kind of ends that, that, that off season phase in May. We, we practice spring. We take a week off kids grad, uh, you know, graduation occurs. And then we start our summer program up after that in season. How do we practice? So I think this is very, very, um, unique to us. Um, we, we practice plan. We script everything. We are down to the second of every, every practice. You know, we're, we're on the field a certain time. We're off the field a certain time when the horn blows. That's what this picture on the right is this is one of the best purchases we made this is a segment timer um all of our periods are five minutes every period has a, has a, has a place where we need to be um we're very organized everything's online google drive um everything's out there for the for the coaches to share amongst each other um like i said we we, we have the clock out there we play music and practice during most of our periods uh, we practice pretty uniquely we're an up-tempo no huddle team so the amount of reps that we get is just tremendous um, our scout cards, everything's organized and prepared. So when we get on that field, we all know what we're doing. There's no talking amongst each other really. Well, who's going where or what drill are we doing? Everything's set up. The bags are out. The footballs are out. There's no wasted time. A couple last things. We do not hit. All right. We, we haven't hit. We haven't took a, a kid, to, a player, a teammate to the ground uh, in probably the last six years. Uh, we play a grueling 16-week schedule, and we want to want to be healthy to get there. Um to win the race, you, you got to get to the starting line. I'm a big believer in that. You know, there's nothing worse than, you know, midweek, you know, you, you're tackling, you're doing a tackling drill, you're taking them to the ground, and your top running back is out for four weeks because of, of a concussion or he twisted his ankle because they rolled to the ground. So we hit, we, we there's other ways to practice tackling. There's other ways to, to learn that. Uh, we just don't do it on each other. Uh, we never take each other to the ground. And then finally, we, we started the No Sweat Wednesdays. A few years ago, Chip Kelly made famous in Oregon, and that's been a big benefit to us as well. All right, last couple here, uh, communication. I think this is vitally important. Um, communication with you, with your staff, obviously, but then to the next level with your team and then with your parents. All right. Um, we use Google Calendar. Uh, again, uh, Google Calendar is is my personal calendar that I keep, and everything is live, up to date. The minute I change it, it goes immediately to our website. The calendar is embedded into our our website. Um, we use Remind to communicate with our team. Obviously, email, texting, um, group me, and then obviously our team website. We do a good job of keeping, you know, like I said, the calendars on there, our records of all of our, our programs, seven to twelve alumni, uh, past records. Um, fundraising, anything you want to know is on that nice um, website. Media and social media, you know, it's huge nowadays. I mean, kids, um, heck, even coaches now that your phones are attached to you. Um, but I think you got you got to discuss, you got to talk with your team about social media and how, how they handle themselves, how they carry themselves. Um, myself and my staff try to make it a, a, uh, a good effort to follow every single person on our team. You know, I want to make sure the kids – know that I'm following them. And if they put something out there, I'm going to see it. If they put something out there that they shouldn't, I'm going to see it and I'm going to call them out on it. All right. They, social media, one bad post can, can, you know, take you down. So you got to be very smart about that. Um, we have a presence, a very good presence on Twitter, on Facebook, on Instagram, you know, our Pinders and football, we have a presence in all those areas. We try to do a good job of posting stuff very often, try to get a lot of followers. And again, it's all about building a brand and, you know, ultimately, we want kids to come out and play football. So the more welcome we are, the more stuff we're putting out there, I think the better it is. Um, relationships in school. You know, again, football, um, you know, at least where, where, where I come from in the Northeast and Western Pennsylvania is is uh, very, very important. 
Uh, but you got to understand that there's a lot of people out there that, that don't like that. So you got to make sure you do a good job in, in school of building great relationships. Um, student managers, we try to have an ops crew of anywhere from six to 10 student managers, kids that maybe love the game of football, but might not be talented enough to play it or might not want to play it or might not, might be injured and they can't play it, whatever it is. So we try to build an ops crew there of student managers that help out, pass equipment out, filming practice, uh, running a drone. Uh, anything that we need throughout the you know the day, practice, game day, etc. Like I mentioned earlier, we have a student video crew. Um, again, it's a good way to, to build relationships in school. Uh, student body and uh, student section, those are huge nowadays. We have an awesome student section that gets behind us on Friday nights. And again, um, you know, we, we, we couldn't be where we're at without them. The band, the flag line, the cheerleaders, and obviously administration. Uh, we have a great relationship with our band. At the end of every game, we go over and salute the band and cheerleaders and thank them for being there for us. And then obviously administration, you need their support to be successful. Uh, last couple here, budgeting and fundraising. So um, if you're not up on this, then again, I think you're doing a huge disservice to your program. You have to understand this. Um, if you're not a money guy, if you don't understand how spreadsheets work, you need to understand and at least try to get up to speed with what, what you're allowed to spend, what you're allowed to use. Um, when I took over my program, we probably had 10,000 mouthpieces just because the, the, the guy that preceded me um, ordered like 200 mouthpieces a year. And they just kept just kept coming where we didn't need that many. Um, so being smart about where the money is being spent every year, looking at your budget. Did it go up? Did it go down? What do you need? What are your what are your needs? If you know you have a bunch of helmets that are getting towards the end of their lifespan, well, maybe you need to set aside some money there to buy a couple new helmets, um, whatever it is. But I think you have to have a, a have a plan. You got to know what your budget is, and then you got to be able to look ahead two, three, four, five years long term there. Um, so you're always ready to go and you never are stuck without the equipment that you need. Got to have great booster and community support. All right. We would not be where we're at without the great booster support. And again, that starts with you as the head coach building relationships there. Um, it starts at the community level. The youth programs got to know that you're there for them, that they're welcome. We hold a big kickoff party where we have all the community come out, the football team, we announce them, we put food out. Um, I give up and give a little quick talk. We have the cheerleaders, the band there playing music. Cheerleaders are doing their, their um, stunts. Uh, it's just a big, great day for the community. Um, and then finally, at the youth organization, um, that's that's your future. So you got to have a great relationship there. We do things where, you know, the seniors will take them around to elementary schools to read. We do a free youth camp for them where we give them a T-shirt and then give them pizza. We hold uh, practices that are open. So if any youth player or coach wants to come by our practice, heck yeah, come on by. They can watch, make them feel welcome. We hold free coaches clinics for our, our um, community coaches. And then finally, I, I take my seniors around in the fall, usually around week five, six, seven, when, when the youth is just about done. And I allow them to speak to the youth and just kind of give them a little story about what it means to them about playing at Pine Richland. Competition. Uh, we try to create competition in everything we do, right? So whether it's in the classroom, on the field, our ramp points is a great way to create competition because, again, those are posted. They're live on our website. Kids can go on there 20 times a day and see, see them updated based on if they came to something, based on how they did it in this event, based on how they – did in their grades based on if they went and watched the girls softball team play, whatever it was, those ramp points are a great way to do that. And then every Thursday in our off season, we do a competition Thursday. So basically um, at the end of our workout, we'll do anything from an, a push up contest to a pull up contest to a tug of war, uh, different things like that, just to try to create competition amongst our players. Incentives, awards, motivations. Uh, we have giveaways, prizes, gift cards. Again, I, I don't think it's any secret, but humans like to get things. We like prizes. We like gifts. So we, we give away things. So I have my boosters buy a bunch of gift cards, you know, small things, $10 at iTunes, you know, um, different different little small restaurants where the kids like to go. Uh, we give a bunch of T-shirts out. We probably do three T-shirts a year. Again, that's, kids like to get that, but that's also great branding for your program uh, throughout the year. We have a lifter of the month. Uh, we do player of the week footballs. So at the end of every game, we have these little commemorative footballs that have the, you know, the team and the name, the team we played and what week it was and offense, defense, scout team, special teams, whatever you want to do. Uh, Buffalo Wild Wings, we go to them and get a player of the week. Uh, they, they donate uh, $50 worth of wings every week um, because they know they're going to, you know, Bobby might go in, but Bobby's going to bring his 10 friends and they're going to, Get business that way. So go out and reach out to some of those restaurants nearby. We give awards for grades. And then finally, 
Um, as you can see on this next slide, we, we do motivational signs, pictures all throughout the facility. And that's what this is. The big one, there's our mantra all in, and that's hanging. It, it doesn't do it justice. That thing is 50 feet wide by about 20 feet high. That's up in the big wall right above uh, the weight room. Um, that's us playing in the state championship two years ago. And then our mantra, like I said, and then down here, this is in our team room on the left here. This is, a, you know, kind of, we, I told you about goals. We really don't talk to them, but the kids can see them every day. On the left here, this is where we play our state championship at Hershey Park. And on the right, that's Heinz Field, where our district championship is. And then in the middle is that quote that I told you about earlier. I did everything in my power to make sure you were success, successful today. Not me, but you. And then finally, finally, at the very end, you can see where X's and O's stands. Um, obviously, you got to be good at X's and O's. you got to be a good football coach. you got to have a good football staff. You got a great players, but with that all being said, we are big believers in being simple, uh, playing fast. Less is more. Um, you know, if your kids don't know what they're doing, if there's too much on their plate, then they're not going to play very fast. And in my in my opinion, you're not going to be very successful. So again, making them have the ability to play fast and not think, and then and finally, at least in, in our program, we want to attack in all three phases. So to conclude. Um, Again, I think in, in building a successful program, you can see there's so much more to it. It's about building relationships. It's about culture. It's about family. And it's about caring. Um, and it all goes back to that original quote, the kids don't care what you know until they know how much you care. And we kind of live and breathe by that. Um, we want our team, our, our players, our community, our parents to be all into us. And we feel if they're all into us, then we're going to be very successful. And again, you know, successful isn't necessarily wins and losses. Um, it's those relationships that you build.